you've probably got the best flight planner available to you, so why aren't you using it? Today we'll be using a great example of a flight where I'm expecting some strong tailwinds and I'll show you some tools and techniques to help you fully benefit in these situations, especially around forecasting your flight time and accurately forecasting your required fuel. So as a recap, tailwinds will generally shorten your flight time and that is because they increase your speed over the ground. Just showing you a few examples on the right hand side of some recent flights where I was encountering some tailwinds. So our example flight is shown here in Navigraph charts and we're going from Barcelona to Budapest. So I've just overlaid the jet stream at flight level 340 and this shows that for our flight we're going to encounter a very strong tailwind. Just taking a look down here at the synoptic you can see the winds are in excess of 100 knots and that will act as a tailwind. Now we are going to plan for flight level 350 so we should also just be mindful of what the winds are doing at flight level 380 because if we think about how X-Plane interpolates the weather, I'm not going to go into any detail here, but we're going to get kind of a mixture of those two. But don't worry, we'll be able to say that we've got a very strong tailwind and make full benefit of that. I do appreciate that most of us are probably using flight planning software such as Simbrief, which of course factors in the winds and then it works out the fuel figures. But I'm going to use the FMC within the Zebo 737 to arrive at my trip fuel, 5% contingency, an alternate and final reserve. So within the Navigraph charts application, I'm going to use the export function and choose the Xplane 12 FMS format as this will also export our SID and star that I've now added to the route. And just to confirm what I was saying, it exports the SID there. Okay, so I've now added in 8.7 tons into plan fuel. So I've got the calculator out. So what I want to show you is if we did 8.7, take away the predicted arrival fuel of 2.9, as you can read there on the right hand FMC. So that's saying that we're going to burn 5.8 tons. And then I've got a difference there, 2.9 down to 2.5 of 400 kilos. So what we'll do, we'll just do 0.4 divided by 5.8 gives me so that's around about a 7% contingency. So I'm happy with that. However, the whole purpose of this video is to show you how we can save some fuel based on the tailwinds. So let's just think of this at the moment that we're going to do our flight in still air. There's no headwinds nor tailwinds. So we're now going to get our hands dirty and read the wind bobs. And I've put on the wind bobs down there. Works the same way that you can just choose the flight level that you are interested in. So going to decide on the waypoint names to uh, use the wind information from based on the strength and direction. And if you want to know how to read the wind barbs, there's a link there on the screen. OK, so the first waypoint that I'm going to use, which will be at our top of climb. So this will be Dallin. 250 degrees at 110 knots. Now to decide on the next one, we're really looking for a significant change in direction or a significant change in speed. So scrolling through, I don't really see anything significant until we get to Maluk, 260 degrees at 110 knots. And then our final one will be here at Pesat. Let's call this based on these winds here and what's happening ahead of us. So we'll call this 270 degrees at 90 knots. Just quickly show you another tool as well that you can use and this is windy and you can see the same jet stream is represented on here. What you can do is left click and you can get a wind readout as well as to where you left click there. So just do a few there as, a, as an example but it will read you the speed and direction as you can see there. Slider bar on the right hand side lets you choose the flight level. All right, so back into the flight deck. So we're going to click on wind data and we're just going to enter 250 at 110. Okay, so just keep your eye out on the right hand FMC because what we should see is the predicted fuel will increase. So execute, it's gone up there to 4.2 tons. So you don't need to enter them at every single waypoint because the one in bold it's the one there that's just going to cascade down. So you can see there that's cascading all the way down until we get down to Malug just here. OK, so when we enter this one, I'm not expecting this now to make a, a big difference because it's already factoring in here this wind speed for a significant portion of the flight. So it remains there at 4.2. 
And then finally, Pesat is going to be 270 at 90. Okay, so that's gone down to 4.1. And that's obviously now factoring in a slightly slower wind speed. All right, so let's now see then if we can save some fuel. But firstly, we'll just look at our expected trip time. So based on the time now and the difference between that and the arrival there of 12.05, that's going to give us a trip time of one hour and 57 minutes. What I'm now going to do is just plug in a few values in here until I come back down to 2.9 again. So my first guess was correct at 7.5. Okay, we're about ready to go fly. Just one item that I'm missing from here, and that's the top of climb temperature. Also just going to read that from Navigraph chart. So putting on the isotemp there, it gives you the deviations and no deviation. So based on uh, 340, the isotemp there is minus 53 degrees. So two sets of figures that you can see there, one's entitled no wind and that's if we were flying the route in still air and would take us two hours and 17 minutes. And the one entitled tailwind are the conditions that we've just discussed. So we're expecting that to take one hour and 57 minutes due to the strong tailwinds. We'll just take a look at the landing in Budapest and then we'll review our forecast. 50, 40, 30, 20. Okay, so we landed in Budapest with 2.8 tonnes of fuel remaining and we burnt 4.8 tonnes. So two minutes different to our forecast. Additional line was necessary on the spreadsheet because I omitted the taxi fuel. So we used 0.2 tonnes at Barcelona. It was quite a long taxi and 4.6 for the trip fuel, which of course was just slightly over our estimate. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It's great fun getting under the hood of the FMC and using other tools additional to your uh, or in place of your normal flight planning software. Now there's many reasons why you would want to carry the optimum uh, amount of fuel. One that I'm thinking of is more agility so you could climb to higher flight levels for example. But of course you may always want more on arrival say for example if you are on a VATSIM event and you expect that you're going to need to hold for a significant time at your destination. So thank you for viewing. Do like, subscribe. Any comments or questions, drop them in the comments and I'll see you on a future video. Thank you and bye bye. Looking back. No, we're not looking back. OK, so we landed in Budapest. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. OK, so just as a as another. I'm going to get a coffee.